What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender modeling tutorial for you. So in this video, we're gonna talk through some tips on how to create copies and duplicates of objects, as well as how to use the array modifier in order to quickly create buildings. Then at the end, I'm gonna show you how to animate a construction animation of the building. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna start off and we're gonna create a steel beam. And so I'm gonna move the default dog out of the way. I'm just gonna do a shift A, I'm just gonna add a plane, and I'm just gonna create a simple steel plate. So I'm just gonna tab into edit mode and extrude this up so that I've got a little bit of thickness. Then, in addition, and I'll go ahead and turn on my screencast keys for you, um, but in addition, what I wanna do is I just wanna add some uh, circles in here to act as the bolts. So I'm just gonna do a shift A and I'm going to add a circle. And we're gonna set this to have six vertices. I'm gonna give it a radius of, and we'll just scale it down like this. So I'm gonna move it up a little bit. We'll just scale it down. And then we're gonna place this right here. I'll tab into edit mode, tap the F key to fill it, and then I'll extrude it to give it a little bit of thickness. I don't wanna to get too far in depth on the detail here but just enough that we have these showing up on here. So I'm going to make sure this is aligned. And then the first way to create duplicates of something is very easy. You can just do a shift D. So if you do a shift D, you can create a duplicate of this object right here. And let's jump over into um, solid shading mode just so you can see these. But then I can come in here and I can just do the same thing with both of these selected. I can do a shift D, then I'm gonna tap the X key in order to duplicate this over here. So that's gonna be the easiest way to create duplicates is just to select them and do a Shift D. Um, but a lot of the time there's more complex things you wanna do. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add my steel I-beam. So I'm just going to do a Shift A and we'll just add a, we'll call it a plane. For right now, I'm just gonna scale it down, move it up. I'm just gonna tab into edit mode real quick. And I'm just going to select the edge, extrude it this way. And then I'm gonna select these two edges and do an E, S. So that's gonna extrude this out. Then I'm gonna tap the X key in order to lock that to the red axis. So now what I have in here is I have basically half of the profile of a steel shape or a steel I-beam. So I'm gonna move this over here so that this is aligned. And so there's a couple different ways you could do this, but in this case, what I wanna do is I want to add a mirror modifier right here. And I'm just going to set this along the Y axis. So notice how what that's doing is that's basically mirroring this shape. And so now if I tab back into edit mode, I can extrude this up and you can see how I'm getting both pieces in here. So this is a little different in the sense that we've really used the mirror modifier in order to create this duplicate, but that means that I don't have to worry about um, modeling the other half of this. So the mirror modifier is a great way to do this. And then you can either leave it in here as a modifier. Um, that way, if you have to make any changes, then uh, those will change along with this, right? So if I was to move this, for example, Notice how the other one is gonna move as well. But in this case, what I wanna do is I just wanna apply this. So I just wanna go into object mode and apply this. And now this is a single object. And I'm just gonna extrude this up. So we, we're gonna do an E and a Z. We're just gonna extrude this up so that our structure has some height. Like this. So now, what I have in here is I have a single object with this uh, vertical steel beam. And um, with this object, notice how these are all in here as individual objects, right? And so I could take all of these and just do a shift D and duplicate them if I wanted to. Um, but that can get a little bit time consuming just because there's a lot of different selections that have to go on and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join these into a single object. You could also parent them, but for now I'm just gonna join them. And so to do that, I'm just gonna select all of these and notice how they're all selected over here. Well, if I do a control J, then this is just gonna join them into a single column object. Right? So I can see my single column object 
right here. So now what I can do is I can use a tool like the array tool in order to create multiple copies of this. So let's say that I wanted to create a few different copies of this um, kind of running down this direction like we had a building structure. So the way that I could do that is I could come in here and I could apply an array modifier like this. And so what I want to do is first off, I want to set my offset, right? So I don't want my offset to be um, like one like it was because then these will be right on top of each other. What I want to do instead is maybe set an offset of 20. So now that's offset 20. And let's say I want more of these. So I'm going to create maybe like five of these like this. So you can see I can use the array tool in order to make those copies really quickly. So now what I want to do is I want to add another array modifier. So, and that's going to go on the bottom of the stack right here. And for this one, instead of having my factor of X set, I'm going to set my factor of Y. And I'm going to set my factor of Y to 20. Or in this case, I'm actually going to set it to negative 20. And so notice how what that's doing is that's allowing me to create a grid of objects really quickly using the array tool. And I'm going to go ahead and maybe set a count of, we'll just call it three for right now. We'll go ahead and we'll call this good. So now what I have in here is I have multiple copies of this object. But notice how if I tab back into edit mode, like this, only one of them gets selected. So you can see how if I start moving the parts and pieces around in here, that the others change too, because they're just copies of the object being created by the modifier. All right, and so now what I wanna do, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. So what I wanna do is I wanna select this face right here in edit mode. So notice how I've tabbed into edit mode. And what I wanna do is I just wanna select these edges right here and I want to use those as a profile off to the side, but I want these to be separate objects, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do a Shift D to duplicate this, but then what I wanna do is I wanna separate this because right now notice how it's a part of this object and I don't necessarily want that. Well, you can't just do a Control X and then tab out of here and do a Control V. That's not how it works in Blender. But what you can do is you can separate this geometry into its own object. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select it in edit mode and I'm just gonna tap the P key right here. That's gonna give me the option for separate. And in this case, I'm gonna take the selection and I'm gonna separate that into a new mesh. And so now notice how that's in here as a separate object, but we do need to remove the array that's in here so to do that, I'm just going to um, go into my modifier and just click the X key so that that doesn't have the array associated with it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it. And notice how right now it's way off of the object origin. So I'm just going to go into object. I'm going to set origin to center of mass surface. So that changed the object origin to the center right here. But then I can just rotate this on the X axis. We'll call it 90 degrees. I'm just going to align this with my steel over here. And so one thing that you might want to do when you're doing that is you might want to turn on vertex snapping because then you can just move this and it's just going to snap to this edge. So you can just click up here um, on, the little, uh, on the little magnet and then you can turn on vertex snapping. Then I'm going to turn it back off. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down to whatever the height is that I want this, uh, whatever the height is that I want this structural member to be. Then I'm just gonna tab in here, tap A to select it all. And I'm just gonna extrude this. Until it aligns with this object. And so I'm gonna do a shift tab to turn that snapping back on just for a second, just so this snaps right here. But notice how I was able to create that really easily. Well, then we just do the same thing or we can add an array modifier and we can just set this to a value of. And so notice how we have a problem here though. When I apply or when I uh, use the modifier right here, notice how we're not getting the same distance. That's because we're currently using a relative offset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off relative offset and turn on constant offset in here. What that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna allow me to actually set this based on a distance rather than something more relative. So in this case, we'll go ahead and we'll call this maybe three and a half meters right here. And then we'll do the same thing down here. 
like this. And granted, these should probably be a little bit bigger, but we're gonna call them good for right now. And so then I just need to adjust this a little bit more just to make sure that it's aligned. And we'll set our constant offset to three and a half. Then we can adjust this up to should be a value of five. Then we'll add another array modifier right here with a constant offset of negative 3.5 in our y direction. And then I'm gonna create a duplicate. For the duplicate, I'm gonna clear the array modifier and I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees. So I'm gonna use this in order to create my other steel beam right here. And I realize this might not be exactly how steel works, but that's okay. Then I'm gonna go into edit mode. I'm gonna move this so that this face aligns. And then we'll just do the same thing with the array modifier. And then one other thing that we're gonna to wanna to do with these is we're also gonna want an array upward, right? So we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna set an array with a constant offset on the Z axis as well, like this. So notice how all I have to do is just add one of these to the members running this way and one of these to the members running this way. So now we've got a complete steel structure in here or really, we only have three objects that we actually had to model, right? We've made it out of three planes right here. So one thing that I do wish that Blender was a little bit better about is I do wish there was a way to group objects or put objects in collections and then apply arrays to those. Because um, having to do it individually is a little bit frustrating. There are some workarounds, but I do wish there was a better way to do this. But then, once we're all done, so if we wanted to, just for fun, we could add build modifiers to all of these different objects. So then if we add this modifier and click play, notice how this is animating this being built like this. So notice how we, if we apply a build modifier and we're gonna wanna apply a build modifier to all three. So we could, we could apply this and join them all together, but I don't really think we need to do that. But if we were to add a build modifier to each one of these individually and then click play, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to come in here and that's gonna create a construction animation. And so then you could start playing around with some things like, for example, you could set your columns to have a length of 20. And then you could set your beams to have a start frame of 20. And so then if you were to play your animation, you'd have your columns come in first and then your beams would start getting pieced in as you go. So creating that construction animation could get really interesting inside of Blender. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Are you doing some of this stuff with the array modifier? Or do you have some other ways of creating copies of things inside of Blender? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.